You ever wondered how you can run depth estimation with a single camera? In this video here, I'm going to show you how we can use this camera here to run depth estimation with the Midas model. So in the previous videos, we went over how to set up the environment and download the models. Right now, we're going to see how we can use it in our own custom Python script, extract all the information and use it in our own custom projects. So we're going to run this live at the end. I'm going to show you all of the code for that, and then you can use it in your own applications and projects. So first of all here, let's just jump straight into the GitHub repository. We have the Midas GitHub repository. We basically just have all the code here. I have cloned it. I shared that in the previous video. So we won't go into details with that, but we can just see like the pretty good results that we're able to get. We can also scroll further down in the GitHub repository and see some of these depth map comparisons with the version 3.1, which is what we're going to use in this video. I also have videos about version 3.0 and also 2.1. So right now they're starting to use these transformer based models. We can just see the accuracy and the precision, the performance of these models here in 3.1 is significantly better. Let's just scroll up here again. We can go in and see the releases. So we have the releases here. We have five tags. So we have version 3.1, 3, 2.1, 2, and version one. If we go into the version 3.1 here, we can see all the model files that they have. You can go in and download all the models here. They have all these different versions of the models. They both have like large models, tiny models. Go in and download them, throw it into your directory for your own projects and applications, and you can go in and directly use them. So let's not just jump straight into Cursor, which is the new AI code editor that I'm using. Here we can see all the code files in my directory. I went over all of that in the previous videos. And then we basically just ran through this run file here, which does all of it, you can pass in like images, image folders. If you don't specify anything, it will open up a video capture. But again, here we have like a bunch of lines of code that we don't really need if you just want to use it in our own custom project. So let's go in here. I created this file here, webcam live.py. And then we will also have the weights over here to the left. So once you have downloaded from the GitHub repository, you can throw them into this weight file and then we can specify it later on when we're going to run the model. So first of all here, we're just going to import the different modules that we need. We need PyTorch, OpenCV, IMUtil for the video stream, NumPy, the Midas model loader here, which is also pretty nice. So we can just directly load the model, specify the path to the model, and then we can start using it together with OpenCV. So first of all here, we're going to have our process function, which is basically going to do all the processing of our image. First of all, here we just have this torch.nograd because we're just going to run inference. So we don't want it to calculate gradients while it's doing a forward pass in our model. So that's why we're using torch.nograd. Then we have this function process. We throw in the device that we want to process our image on. We also throw in the model. So here it's going to use the GPU as default if that is available and you have installed PyTorch with GPU support. If you don't have a GPU, it will just run on the CPU, but it will do, do all of that automatically. So if you want to take your machine learning, AI, and computer vision skills to the next level, I also have my courses on the website. You can go check them out. We have everything from update detection with deployment, update tracking with Yolo V8. We also have transformers and segmentation courses. The most interesting one for me is definitely like this research paper implementation course where we learn how to actually like implement research paper architecture. So we're going to have the architecture on one side, we're going to have code on the other side. So then we're also going to throw in the image that we actually like want to process. We also need to specify the input size and also the target size of our depth map. So first of all here, we need to create a sample. So we go inside torch, then we have an a NumPy array here, so we need to pass in our image as a NumPy array. It will be that automatically when we load it in with OpenCV. Then we pass it onto the device, either using the GPU or the CPU. And then we're just going to create a sample here where we're going to unscreeze it. So we're not going to like run batches, we're just going to run a single sample in this example here. Then we're going to do forward pass of our sample. We just take our sample, do a forward pass in our model, and then we will get the prediction now, which will be the initial depth map or the predicted depth map. Then we're going to do some interpolation where we actually just want to like um, convert it back to the CPU again and to a NumPy array, we want to interpolate and basically resize our image back to our target size. So when it does the processing, it acts like does it as a, at a lower resolution image. But with them again, we can just do the interpolation and upsample our image. We unscreeze our prediction. We set our target size here, which is the input to our function. We're going to use by qubit interpolation. You can also use different of other different modes, but this is basically just like a default one and we don't want to align the corners. Then we're going to squeeze it again to output because again, we are just running like a single batch, but now right now we just need to get like a NumPy array with our depth map. Also convert it to the CPU again, because if we're using the TPU, we need to convert it back to the CPU to be able to visualize it with OpenCV. And then we have it as a torch tensor. So we're going to convert it back to a NumPy array again. Once we have done all of that, so first of all, we create a sample 
throw through the model, we get our prediction, then we upsample our image to our target size, and then we return our depth map. So that is what our process function is doing. Then we also have this create side by side. It is only for visualization. So we can have the original image on one side and the depth map on the other side. So that is the two inputs to our function. Then we get a depth min and also a depth max. So we basically just take the minimum value in our depth map and a maximum value in our depth map, because then we can go in and normalize our depth map to values between um, zero and 255 in this example here, because this will basically normalize it to uh, values between zero and one multiplied by 255. So we basically just get intensities for our depth map. So here we see that we have normalized our depth map and then we can also just repeat it for the right side and we can apply a color map as well. So in OpenCV, they have different types of color map depending on like whatever you want to use. But here we're just going to use this color map underscore Inferno. And then we can concatenate our original image and also the right side, which will be our depth map. When we're normalizing our depth map, it will only be single values. So we'll just have an image with a single channel. And that's why we need to multiply it here with three and basically just repeat it along all the dimensions. So we will have like three channels as well, but all the channels will basically like be the same. And that is just so we can go in and visualize this and concatenate it and have this side by side image for visualizations. So now we're going to have our run function we set up the device. So, so here, if CUDA is available, we use CUDA and the GPU, or else we're just going to use the CPU. We set optimization equal to false, side equal to false, hide none. So these are basically just some parameters that we need to set when we load our model. And then we can also specify our model type. So right now we're going to use the DPT, BEIT large model. And again, I just showed you the weights files over in our directory. You can download all of that on the GitHub repository. So now we have this load model function. I'll just zoom out a bit. So we have load model, we pass in the device, model path, model type, optimize, height, and also like um, if our image is a squared image. So now we're going to open up a video stream with OpenCV. We can use this video stream um, class that we import up here for IM utils. We can just specify the, the source. So this will be the index of our camera. If you have multiple cameras attached to your computer, connected to your computer, you can either space like, like zero, one, two, and so on. Right now, I just have a single camera. Then we can start the video stream and start reading in frames from our camera. So here we're going to have a while true. So as long as, as we're just inside of this for loop, as long as we end up hitting like the escape key, then we will terminate our program. If we hit escape on a keyboard, it will break, it will destroy all the windows, and it will also stop our video stream. So then we're going to have our video, we call the method dot read, and that would act like just return a frame. And that is an image that we load in from our camera connected to our computer. So if we're able to read in the frame, if frame is not none, then we're basically just going to like flip the image here, which is required to get RGB. So we have the original image in RGB here. We just flip our frame. Then we're going to do this transformation. First of all, we just normalize our image. We will have values between zero and 255, which are the pixel intensities along each channel in our image. And we have three channels. We have our original image here in RGB format. We're going to normalize it. Then we call a process mod method here. We have the device model image net width and also net height. So that is actually like what we're going to specify up here or like return when we load our model, process it. We have the original image shape. So we're basically just going to use the target size as the original image. So it will be one to one. So we can also have this side by side view. Then we're going to convert it back to BGR format again. We just flip the channels. Then we get the content here, which is our side by side comparisons. So we have the original image in BGR format. We need that with OpenCV. And then we have our prediction, which will also be our depth map. And then we're just going to insert it with OpenCV. First of all, we just normalize it so we have values between um, zero and one. So now we have everything. You can use this in your own projects and applications. And the only thing left is to run this program here and see the awesome results with the Midas AI model. So now our program is up and running. Let's now grab the webcam and basically just see some uh, results. So right now we're basically just running this BIT model, play around with it. Let's just move it around and see some results. Let's just take a look at the keyboard here. I actually get a pretty nice depth map of our keyboard. Uh, we can also see we have a bit more detail here. Let's just take my hand in. So we get some pretty nice results. Let's just move the camera around and see some more examples. So this is actually like a pretty nice example. So 
So that's it for this video here, guys. I hope you can use this in your own applications and projects. You can take a single camera or just a single image. You can generate a depth map, and this can be used for a lot of different use cases and applications. So I hope you have learned a ton. Thank you for asking about this video here, and also hit the subscribe button on the video, and also the like button. Hope to see you in one of the other video, guys. Stay tuned. Bye for now.